A story is told of Saint Peter who encounters a dead person at the gates of heaven. Saint Peter asks him if he loved anyone passionately. The man replies, No. Saint Peter then asks him if he has encountered any trustworthy friends at any point in his life. The man replies, I concentrated only on my job, which resulted in not looking for a trustworthy friend. Saint Peter is really disappointed of his reply and he asks a final question. I understand that you were preoccupied with your duties. However, have you at least loved a child in whole of your life? The reply was an emphatic no. Saint Peter looks at him angrily and tells him, You are too late to arrive at the gates of heaven, for you died long ago. Brothers and sisters, the gospel narrative of today is a sign performed by Jesus in order to reveal his identity. I am the resurrection and the life. It is also an invitation to participate in the promise of Jesus. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Just as Jesus invites the dead Lazarus to rise to a new and abundant life, he invites us, Lazarus, come out. And in the context of the COVID-19, he invites us to come out too. There are three dimensions in the gospel narrative of today, which facilitate the experience of your new life for Lazarus, and they could also mediate our own experience of new and abundant life even in the context of COVID-19. One, the presence of Jesus, that is, grace. Second, personal response, that is, freedom and responsibility. Third, the contribution of the community, that is, governments, health experts, and the immediate community. First, presence of Jesus. Both Martha and Mary, in their first expression of faith in Jesus, declare, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. However, what they fail to recognize is that Jesus is now here. He who could have prevented the death of their brother could also now raise him to life. The presence of Jesus does make a difference. Even in our lives, it brings life, new lease of life. Has humanity moved away from the presence of God? Yet, God was there. God is here. God will be with us. It is up to us to respond to Him. In a situation where churches have been closed, and church services cancelled. I am sure there is a challenge for us as individuals and as smaller units of families to respond to God. Maybe this will make our respond to the presence of God more intimate, personal and contemplative. Second, personal response. The promise of abundant life by Jesus becomes true for us 
when we can respond readily to his call. When Jesus cries out, Lazarus, come out, Lazarus responds readily. He does not shy off from the invitation of Jesus, saying, for example, Oh, why do you disturb me, Jesus? Here I am in this cozy world of darkness. I am all right. Why don't you leave me alone? Lazarus comes out to your new life. Jesus does not force on us his life. We need to respond to share in it. To come out the situation of COVID-19, each individual is called to be responsible in their choices. It calls for personal discipline. My irresponsible words and actions can affect other people adversely. I need to come out of the tomb of complacency and arrogance. Third, the role of community. At least on two occasions in the gospel text of today, Jesus invites the crowd to do their part in the process of giving life back to Lazarus. He who could raise a dead man to life could have also magically moved the stone at the mouth of the grave. But Jesus requests the crowd, take away the stone. Again, when the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with bandages and his face wrapped with a cloth, Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. The believing community around the individual plays its role in facilitating the sharing in the life of Christ. In the context of COVID-19, this community could be governments, health workers, people who have to make sacrifices and are suffering economically, people who are taking risk offering essential services. God needs human collaboration in realizing his plan for humanity even today. People who are ill need our care and support. As we move towards the Holy Week, may we recognize the presence of Jesus and respond to his call, even assisted by the community around us. The prophet Ezekiel in the first reading urges the exiled Israelite people in Babylon to look beyond the siege and destruction of Jerusalem to a new future when God's Spirit will restore their nation. God promises them a new life and they will be filled with the Spirit of God. The prophet Ezekiel offers hope for them who believe in the God of the life. St. Paul, the second reading, reminds the Roman Christians the power of God's Spirit that will give life to their mortal bodies. He implies that this new life is not something that will start only on the last day, but is taking effect in their lives now. For this reason, he encourages them to live now according to the Spirit. Let us allow the stones that encase and entomb the Spirit be rolled away, so that we may allow the Spirit of the Lord to work in us. The Spirit of the Lord is a life-giving force and a transformative energy. Let us remember that no one is dead until they are dead and life becomes interesting when lived outside the box. May the presence of COVID-19 challenge us to examine our contemporary individual and collective value system ruled by speed and immediacy, aimed at money and me, enslaved by individualism and cons consumerism. There is an invitation to slow down, to recognize people 
who form part of our immediate family and community to realize that money is not a commodity that we can endlessly produce. Let us process what is happening around us in silence and contemplation. There is meaning and purpose. Out of this traumatic situation, a greater wisdom is sure to emerge. Let us live in hope. God is in control. Lazarus, humanity, is only asleep. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.